accurate. love what Sydney is saying. He's, he's absolutely right. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's irritating to see her keep busting shots at me and not paying homage, and then you're going to bust shots at me. That's really irritating. And Little Kim said, leave Jonesy alone. Jonesy don't hurt nobody. Stop. Yep. You saved me. You're my hero. But I hated everything about that movie. I hated it, wasn't involved in it. I actually had to get my lawyers involved, in which I ended up getting a check from it. Mm -hmm. And that was the only reason why, just whatever. Diddy finds himself ensnared in a legal entanglement that has kept him grounded, with Lil' Kim recently stepping forward to address the situation. Allegedly, Lil' Kim possesses compromising photos of Diddy engaging in questionable activities and has claimed that she was forced to cover for his crimes. Let's delve into what Lil' Kim has revealed about Diddy's circumstances. Reflecting on the influential artist who shaped the music and pop culture landscape of the 90s, Lil' Kim Kim stands prominently among them. Bursting onto the rap scene under the guidance of the notorious Big, this bed dynamo quickly became a sensation as the standout member of Junior Mafia, prompting a clamor for her solo debut. In 1996, Lil' Kim unleashed Hardcore, her inaugural album, instantly earning recognition as a style icon and a prominent figure in the rap genre. Fusing S appeal with lyrical prowess, the petite femme fatale dominated the rap scene with a series of platinum albums and chart topping singles, solidifying her status as one of the greatest rappers in history. However, Lil' Kim's journey is not without its share of drama, tracing back to the early days of her career. At the pinnacle of success, competition and rivalries were inevitable, and Lil' Kim faced these challenges head-on. From enduring a long-standing feud with fellow Brooklynite Foxy Brown to more recent conflicts with artists like Nicki Minaj, Lil' Kim has consistently embraced confrontation, proving her resilience and determination over the years. Whether emerging victorious or facing setbacks, Lil' Kim remains a force to be reckoned with in the world of rap. As a little girl, I would listen to them and watch them. And I knew, one thing I knew about me and MC, like, we was from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So I knew that me and One particularly noteworthy clash involved Lil' Kim and Diddy. Despite their occasional disagreements over the years, the tension escalated when Diddy took on the management of Nicki Minaj in 2010. Diddy and Lil' Kim's relationship has deep roots, stemming from their connections with the legendary rapper The Notorious Big Diddy signed Biggie to his Bad Boy Records in 1993, propelling the Brooklyn-bred MC to fame. Biggie, in turn, discovered Lil' Kim during his days participating in rap battles on Brooklyn streets. Intrigued by her talent, he invited her to join his group, Junior Mafia, and they began recording music together. What he said, when he said, yeah, I think Kim is more irritated with the fact that, you know, how the situation is going down, especially what Puffy is doing. Yeah, he Their bond transcended music, evolving into a friendship and romance. Lil' Kim became Biggie's confidant, and she recounted in a 2016 interview with Entertainment Weekly how he saw her as the future's biggest female rapper and how their dynamic inspired each other creatively. When Biggie introduced Lil' Kim to Diddy, Diddy initially had reservations about her as a rapper, stating, she's too pretty to be rapping. Female rappers don't look like her. What am I supposed to do with her? Despite his initial skepticism, Lil' Kim's talent couldn't be denied. Interestingly, Diddy never signed Lil' Kim to Bad Boy Records, even after her debut album Hardcore achieved platinum status. Over the years, their relationship encountered strains, with Lil' Kim revealing in a 2011 interview with MTV that they were no longer on speaking terms. The rift deepened when up-and-coming rapper Nicki Minaj took a shot at Lil' Kim on Diddy's song with Dirty Money. Hello, good morning. The hurt was exacerbated when Diddy did not visit Lil' Kim during her incarceration from 2005 to 2006 on federal perjury charges. Despite feeling let down, Lil' Kim and Diddy eventually reconciled, burying the hatchet to work together in preserving Biggie's legacy. In 2016, they embarked on the Bad Boy Family reunion tour across the U.S., uniting iconic figures from Diddy's past collaborations. The tour served as both a celebration of their shared history and a testament to the enduring impact of the Bad Boy family. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to rock with anybody that hard, you should be rocking with me that hard. This is 50 that hard. If you're going to rock with anybody that hard, you know what I mean? However, Kim perceived this move as disloyalty and didn't hesitate to express her sentiments to the media. In June 2010, during a live performance of All About the Benjamins, Lil Kim publicly called out Diddy, suggesting that he should be ashamed of himself. Diddy, in response, defended his professional ties with Nicki Minaj in a subsequent radio interview, downplaying any 
issues with Kim, emphasizing, I want to say I love Lil' Kim, man, and asserting, it ain't no beef. However, in 2011, Lil' Kim delved deeper into her grievances with Diddy. She cited his failure to write or visit her during her prison term and allowing Nicki Minaj to disrespect her on his own track as reasons for their fallout. In a candid conversation with Sway Calloway on MTV News' Rap Fix Live, Lil' Kim opened up about her association with Sean Diddy Combs, a journey that unfolded independently of being signed to his bad boy records. According to Lil' Kim, it was the notorious Big who initially introduced her to Puffy, expressing reservations about her rap career due to her striking appearance. She recalled Biggie saying, she's too pretty to be rapping. Interestingly, despite Diddy passing on signing not only Lil' Kim but also Junior Mafia, he had a change of heart upon hearing Lil' Kim's debut album, Hardcore, played by the notorious Big. Diddy insisted on being part of the album and ended up collaborating on No Time, the lead single from Hardcore. Notably, this track was initially intended to be a remix of Junior MAFIA's Get Money. This twist of fate marked a pivotal moment in Lil Kim's career and solidified her connection with Diddy, despite not formally being part of Bad Boy Records. And you can't, you can never make another Big and Kim. That's not gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. Lil' Kim further revealed that her relationship with Diddy has soured, and they are no longer in communication. She expressed her discontent with Diddy's lack of intervention when Nicki Minaj took shots at her, even on a track they collaborated on, such as Dirty Money's Hello Good Morning. In recounting her time spent behind bars for federal perjury from 2005 to 2006, Lil' Kim mentioned feeling let down by Diddy's absence and lack of support. Despite her loyalty to him, she asserted that Diddy never visited her in prison, wrote her a letter, or provided provided a means for her to contact him during that challenging period. Her frustration with Diddy heightened as she contrasted his actions with his visit to Lil Wayne on Rikers Island the previous year, suggesting a disparity in their relationship. You know, at the end of the day, like, Puffy is Puffy. He will never, he will, all, I mean, you know, it's all about what he can do, what he can give from people. That's it. Puffy is... It's all about himself. However, people believe that Nicki Minaj was the root of the rift between Diddy and Lil Kim. The tension between Lil Kim and Nicki Minaj can be traced back to the early days when Nicki released promotional pictures that bore a striking resemblance to Lil Kim's iconic 1996 album cover. This sparked debates over whether Nicki was taking over or paying homage to the rap queen. The first meeting between Lil Kim and Nicki Minaj took place backstage at a Lil Wayne concert, and their accounts of the encounter differ. Nicki claims she asked Lil' Kim if everything was okay between them, but Lil' Kim recalls a more confrontational response, stating, Picture somebody saying to me, we good, I'll wring her throat, snatch her larynx out. Despite their initial meeting, both artists later collaborated on a Birdman song. Lil' Kim admitted that when she agreed to feature on the track, she had no prior knowledge that Nicki would also be part of it. While Kim expressed openness to the collaboration for the sake of women in the industry, she couldn't resist including a pointed lyric on the track, Never be another me, what you out your mind? In 2010, during one of Lil' Kim's concerts, Ray J took shots at Nicki Minaj. While standing on stage with Lil' Kim, Ray J addressed the brewing conflict by stating, I'm seeing a lot of Lil' Kim imposters. I'm not saying no names, but you know who. Lil' Kim added her perspective by emphasizing that they love Nicki, but want her to pay homage, concluding with a bold statement, If you don't pay homage, then F you. Drake swiftly entered the fray to support Nicki Minaj after the Lil' Kim and Ray J incident. Approximately 24 hours later, during a collaborative performance, Drake made it clear where his allegiance lay, telling the crowd, I don't give a F what Lil' Kim or nobody else talking about. You the baddest chick to ever do this S. Nikki, appreciative of Drake's defense, referred to him as family and shared a laugh as he walked off stage. The feud escalated with the remix to Diddy's Hello Good Morning, where Nicki Minaj rapped the line, Did I kill a queen? Raising speculation about a reference to Queen Bee Lil Kim. In June 2010, Lil Kim openly addressed the ongoing conflict with Nicki Minaj for the first time. Speaking to This Is 50, she accused Nicki of taking subliminal shots at her and other female rappers. The tension reached a new height when Lil Kim delivered a verse at a Queen's concert that month, asserting, I'd kill that B with my old saint, this S come and go. The feud continued to escalate as Lil' Kim released her album through PayPal only. In response, Nicki dropped the diss record, Tragedy, with lyrics that took aim at Lil' Kim's career trajectory, calling her a tragedy and a parody. Yeah.
It must hurt to sell your album or PayPal, especially when you win the game 1520. In a 2010 interview with Power 105, Lil' Kim expressed doubt about the possibility of reconciliation, stating, it will never happen. However, in a surprising turn of events in 2013, Nicki Minaj named Lil' Kim as one of her inspirations during an interview with Hot 97. Nicki emphasized that she harbored no beef with anyone and suggested that life is too short for such serious conflicts, signaling a potential shift in the narrative between the two artists. Now Diddy entered the scene and reacted to this feud. While Puff worked worked with Lil Kim in the past, he now works with Minaj, and when asked about their current war of words, Diddy simply said he was neutral on the subject. In a recent interview with Funkmaster Flex, Diddy also added that Kim remains very near to his heart and that he's never heard Minaj say anything bad about Kim. I love Lil Kim no matter what's going on, no matter what's being said. Kim definitely has a responsibility for my success. Me working with Nicki Minaj has nothing to do with going against Kim. When Kim works with other producers, when she raps with other artists, I'm not getting upset, it's not a problem," he told Flex. I wouldn't be around Nikki if I ever heard something negative about Kim. I've never heard nothing like that. Then, when it comes to just being an MC, then I've gotta stand back. If they wanna do things and be MCs, that's their business. I'm not with any negativity. I'm not with no beef. I love both of them. Right now, Nicki Minaj, that's who my artist is. That's who I consult. That's who I do business with. I no longer do business with Kim on that level, but Kim will always have a special place in my heart. In an interview with Atlanta radio host, Ryan Cameron, Lil' Kim didn't hold back when addressing her grievances with Diddy. She revealed that both Baby and Puffy had attempted to reach out to her numerous times, but she viewed them as significant contributors to the issues at hand, making any reconciliation efforts futile. She said, Baby tried to reach out a hundred times, Puffy tried to reach out, but I feel like both of those two were a big major part of the problem, so it was really nothing to talk about. Regarding her disappointment with Puffy, Lil' Kim emphasized a perceived lack of loyalty, recounting their history together, she recalled instances where Puffy would intervene and prevent the release of songs that contained offensive content about individuals he had relationships or financial dealings with. Lil' Kim found it disrespectful that Puffy seemed to have abandoned this principle, allowing her grievances to go unchecked. He never really did nothing for me. I mean, when we were coming up, yeah, you know, we had to do things for each other, but, like, I, I judged by what happened afterwards. She expressed frustration with Puffy's explanation that her discontent stemmed from his desire to collaborate with another female artist. Lil' Kim dismissed this claim as preposterous, pointing out that Puffy had worked with numerous other female artists in the past without issue. To her, his response seemed nonsensical and failed to address the core of her concerns. As far as Puffy, I feel it was very disrespectful because being with Puffy for so long, I remember plenty of times when I said something that may have been offensive about somebody, and Puffy, back in the day, he wouldn't let any of those records go out. As a matter of fact, he would say, no, 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 you gotta change that. You can't say this. Especially if it was about somebody he had a relationship or was getting money with. He wouldn't let that ride like that, so that's what bothered me. Now he's sitting there saying she's mad because I wanted to work with another female. Come on, how preposterous is that? How many females has he worked with that I was cool with or didn't have a problem with so his answer didn't make any sense to me. Fortunately, the two were able to reconcile, putting their differences aside for a surprise Bad Boy Records reunion at the 2015 BT Awards. Since then, there have been no no apparent signs of strain in their relationship, suggesting a lasting resolution to their past conflicts. However, speculation among fans has arisen regarding the nature of Lil' Kim and Diddy's relationship, with some expressing suspicions that Diddy might have exerted influence to keep Lil' Kim quiet, similar to his alleged actions with Cassie. There is a belief among some fans that Lil' Kim's sudden silence may indicate that she possesses compelling evidence of Diddy engaging in questionable activities, such as tea. So I was a, to be honest, you know, I was messing, this guy was married, and at the end of the day, we were together first. So I guess it was being that, like, okay, we had our relationship first. This speculation is fueled by the notion that powerful figures in the entertainment industry may employ various means to maintain control and silence potential detractors. The comparison to Diddy's past relationship with Cassie adds to the intrigue, with fans drawing parallels and questioning whether Lil' Kim's silence is a result of coercion or suppression. In recent days, Diddy was accused of some serious allegations by his former girlfriend. However, according to the New York Post, the decision 
to settle Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy was reached on Friday, November 17, just a day after the lawsuit by the Me and You singer was filed in Manhattan Federal Court. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control, Cassie said in a statement. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. In his own statement, Combs said, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love she said in a statement. Diddy also shared his own statement saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. In records acquired by Hip Hop DX on Thursday, November 16th, the vocalist levied a range of allegations against the bad boy mogul, encompassing charges of RST and physical A. And he knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Biggie, he put hot on him. That's the, next the lawsuit filed on Thursday and obtained by the AP details alleged incidents that took place in the early 1990s. According to the accuser, she was coerced into engaging in S activity with Sean Diddy Combs, and subsequently, Aaron Hall allegedly pinned her down and forced her into a S encounter as well. The accuser's friend was also purportedly coerced into having S relations with both men. The lawsuit further claims that Combs visited the women's residence days later in an attempt to dissuade them from reporting the incidents. During this encounter, he allegedly choked one of the women, identified in the suit as Jane Doe, until she lost consciousness. A spokesperson for Combs denied the allegations. These are fabricated claims falsely alleging misconduct from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute, Combs' spokesperson said in a statement to People. This is nothing but a money grab. Because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. The legal filing goes on to claim that after the traumatic encounter, Aaron Hall allegedly entered the room and forced the victim to engage in S activity. The woman who managed to leave the apartment was reportedly later informed by her friend that she too had been coerced into having S with both Diddy and Aaron Hall in a different room. These disturbing allegations form the basis of the lawsuit, underscoring the serious nature of the accusations against both individuals. Diddy is facing another lawsuit claiming that he <laughs> the woman along with Aaron Hall. As previously reported, the latest allegation against Diddy is the third lawsuit filed just before the end of the Adult Survivors Act that allowed alleged victims of SA who have exceeded the statute of limitation to file a civil claim. The first lawsuit, which was later settled, involved Diddy's ex-girlfriend and R&B singer Cassie Ventura, who accused him of R among a list of horrific crimes. The second lawsuit filed earlier this week by Joy Dickerson Neal against Combs accused him of D and R her when she was a college college student in 1991. The lawsuit also claimed Diddy allegedly distributed revenge of their encounter. Diddy has been accused of and a lot of other crimes by his ex-girlfriend Cassie in a huge lawsuit that details the disturbing claims. A recent lawsuit has been also filed against Sean Diddy Combs in the New York Supreme Court. The female plaintiff alleges that in 1991, when she was a college student, the rapper A. Her. According to the lawsuit, she reluctantly agreed to have dinner with Combs at a Harlem restaurant. Afterward, he insisted she accompany him and allegedly A. Her to the point where she couldn't stand or walk without assistance. The legal complaint also claims that Combs filmed the incident and distributed the video without her consent throughout New York State. These legal actions against Combs are occurring as the deadline for the Adult Survivors Act in New York approaches. This law temporarily lifts the statute of limitations for SA claims. Notably, various figures in the music industry in Hollywood, including Axel Rose, Jamie Foxx, Cuba Gooding Jr., Neil Portnow, Louisiana. Reed and Steven Tyler have faced accusations in court filings as part of this legal wave prompted by the temporary suspension of limitations. Diddy is named in the federal suit um, was filed on Thursday in New York um, claims of claims that he broke into her home. Having signed with Diddy's record label in 2006, Cassie made allegations that Diddy exercised complete control over every aspect of her life after that, including her living situation, vehicle, clothing, and even her medical records, all in an effort to maintain dominance over her. The lawsuit also asserted that Diddy targeted rapper Kid Coody, who briefly dated Cassie in 2011 during a challenging period in her relationship with Diddy. Unexpectedly, just one day after filing the lawsuit, 
lawsuit, Cassie and Diddy reached an out-of-court settlement. This swift resolution left numerous aspects of the case unresolved, and the music industry responded to the news with heightened awareness of the complexities and challenges surrounding allegations of A within the entertainment realm. And Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, they're saying tonight that the two have settled a lawsuit she filed against the mogul yesterday in Manhattan federal court. The filing describes Diddy's alleged tactics to keep Cassie under his control, including acts of intimidation such as blowing up a man's car, dangling a friend over a 17th-floor balcony, and asking Cassie to carry his <laughs> in her purse. She never went to the police out of fear that it would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. Diddy denied the allegations. Cassie, Miss Cassandra Ventura, was held down by Mr. Combs and endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands, the lawsuit reads. For Miss Ventura, the dark times were those she spent trapped by Mr. Combs in a cycle of A, violence, and ST. Diddy first expressed romantic interest in Cassie in 2006, the lawsuit claims, when his makeup artist mentioned that he was interested. Soon after, the young star is said to have been drawn into his jet-setting, D-fueled lifestyle. Once they entered a romantic relationship, Diddy and his inner circle allegedly controlled every aspect of her life. The lawsuit claims those close to the founder of Bad Boy Records turned a blind eye to physical A. Beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs' staff and employees, the suit read, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Cassie said she never went to the police for fear that it would give Diddy an excuse to hurt her. In one instance of A in 2009, he allegedly kicked her repeatedly in the face, making her bleed, and had his staff hide her in a hotel room. Every time she hid, Mr. Combs's vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her, and those who worked for Mr. Combs's companies implored her to return to him, the filing stated. Many went as far as to explicitly state that her failure to return to Mr. Combs would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. The lawsuit filed by Cassie outlines further distressing details, claiming that she experienced memory loss due to extensive substance use and suicidal thoughts during her relationship with Diddy. The court documents highlight a concerning incident where MRI results were allegedly sent directly to Diddy. The suit names Diddy, using his real name Sean Combs, along with affiliated business entities such as Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, Epic Records, Combs Enterprises, and Docor. This suggests a broad complicity in the alleged actions. In seeking justice, Cassie has sought an unspecified amount in compensatory damages through the legal action. Says that not long after she met him in 2005, when she was only 19 years old, he began a pattern of control and a that included. In other sections of the filing, Cassie claimed that Diddy compelled her to participate in freak-offs, involving arrangements where she had no choice but to organize and engage in S-acts with male service workers while he masturbated. According to the lawsuit, these encounters persisted for years, taking place in upscale hotels across the country and sometimes happening as frequently as once a week. Diddy allegedly documented these incidents by taking photos and filming them. Despite Cassie attempting to delete videos from her phone, her efforts were futile, and she even found herself forced to watch footage on a flight, mistakenly thinking she had successfully removed it. So you feel like Diddy was having with Jamel? They had to be for both of them. They was in the room, right? You right. It's a freak off session. Following an FO in 2016, he allegedly paid a hotel $50,000 to erase hallway surveillance footage of an intoxicated Diddy throwing glass vases at Cassie when she tried to escape after he gave her a black eye. She would take copious amounts of D to disassociate during these horrific encounters, including ecstasy, GHB, ketamine, M, and A in excessive amounts. The excessive substance use led to addiction, Cassie said. The lawsuit suggested Diddy blew up Kid Cootie's car in 2012 in retaliation for the Up Up and Away rapper's brief relationship with Cassie. Diddy once said he would target him. Around that time, the suit says, Kid Cootie's car exploded in his driveway. In a statement through his spokesperson, Cootie confirmed Cassie's account. This is all true, he told the New York Times. Diddy forced his way into her home and R her in 2018, according to the filing, while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Following the incident, Cassie left him for good. She ended her association with Bad Boy in 2019. The recent revelations in Cassie's case have led some to draw parallels with Kim's situation, speculating that Diddy may have silenced Kim by exerting pressure, especially if there are potential incriminating recordings involved. The suggestion is that fear of exposure may have played a role in such actions, particularly considering the 
the similarities between Cassie's allegations and the broader context of A within the entertainment industry. The public's awareness of Cassie's case has fueled a belief that if Kim possesses footage similar to what was described in Cassie's lawsuit, there may be some truth to the concerns surrounding Diddy's conduct. One person wrote, Diddy look at Lil' Kim like a business deal. That's why he never showed her love while she was in prison. She couldn't make him any money, so she was worthless to him. Another person added, Diddy ain't never been loyal to anyone from the looks of it. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.